Now, look, well, I've spoken a bit about racism this week, about people like the ABC always trying to talk up racism and using their latest Australia Talk survey to try to argue that we are a racist nation and that we need a national strategy to tackle this shameful blight on our country. And yesterday we looked at a silly little bun fight in Tasmania over whether gollywogs are a symbol of oppression and racism or just cute old-fashioned dolls. All of this can be traced back, of course, to critical race theory and the worldwide movement to view all white people as privileged and innately racist and to see everything through the prism of identity politics. Well, today, let me share with you some good news. Just a dad and his little girl in the US, in the United States, talking common sense against the tide. Daddy teaches you you can be anything in this world that you want to be, right? Don't daddy teach you that? Yeah, and it doesn't matter if, if you're black or white or any color. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, brown, yellow, yellow. right? Black. And, and how we treat people is based on who yeah. they are and not and what color nice. they are. And if they're nice and smart. See, this is, how, this is how children think right here. Critical race theory wants to end that. Not with my children. It's not going to happen. My baby's going to know that no matter what she wants to be in life, all she has to do is work hard, and she can become that. Work hard even though you don't know anyone. You can make friends. <laughs> yeah, you can make friends, no matter what color they are. So we need to stop CRT, period, point blank. Children do not see skin color, man. They love everybody. If they're good people, they love them. So simple, isn't it? Kids don't judge people by colour or creed. Any discrimination, of course, that happens, they learn that from others later on. That sort of stuff is spot on, isn't it? It's just all about what Martin Luther King Jr. said. That is, we judge people not by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. That stuff is going viral, as they say on social media, and it's a good thing too. Let's bring in our Wednesday wrangle now with Liz Storer and Justin Smith. And Liz, uh, you can't but love that sort of attitude from a little girl. Let's hope she gets to live her life that way and is not confronted by all this critical race theory along the way. Here, here. I too saw this video today. As you say, it was going absolutely viral. And these things go viral because people are so sick of this critical race theory being shoved down their throats. They are sick of the division. They are sick of this false narrative. And it is a false narrative. That's why before Trump was shoved out of the Oval Office, democratically, of course, uh, he was rooting this out of the educational system in America and making sure that that was a priority. It's infiltrated the military over there. It's throughout schools. And everyone's standing up against it because, of course, this is far more prevalent in the states, this critical race theory. Everyone standing up against it is getting bashed big time. But they are gaining traction. And videos like this go a long way. Yeah, look, a lot of people want to replicate the same sort of race issues in Australia. And, Justin, the ABC this week, and their sort of survey where they survey their viewers and find out they just sort of get a bounce back, they're telling us that we're a racist country. Well, we all know there's racist things happen now and then and uh, hopefully it all get called out. But they're telling yeah. us that sort of three-quarters of, three of us reckon we're a racist country. Is that, is that your experience? No, I don't, look, we're, we're not. I mean... To, to call any country a racist country, I think, is just well and truly over the top. But racism does exist too. You know, yep. surely there's got to be a middle ground where we don't say, hey, listen, you know, we are an entirely racist country and we go to the other extreme and say it's not there. Of course it's there. There's piles of it. And every time it comes up, we've got to knock it down and knock it on the head. But yeah. going to the, I, I thought that was a bit, a bit extreme, to be frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think you're right. I mean, this is, you want to be the sort of country where when racism rears its ugly head, most people call it out and oppose it and, uh, and, and shout it down. And, and I think we're pretty close to being that country. Uh, no one's perfect, of course, but we're pretty close to it. Now, someone who seems to be paying a bit of price for her wokeness, at least for some of the hateful stuff she's been putting out there on social media against the Prime Minister and his wife, is the comedian and television star Magda Zabanski. Here's the promo for her new Channel 9 show. Eight contestants. Eight ordinary Australians. Or are they? I prefer to think of them as Roman gladiators 
But instead of swords and spears, their weapons are knowing which Hemsworth brother was in Blue Healers and the location of the big banana. Seven of those contestants will be meat for the lions. One will walk away with their life and up to a quarter of a million dollars. It's time to unleash hell tonight on The Weakest Link. I haven't seen the show. I don't know whether that's wet your appetite, appetite, Justin. Apparently, it's not going too well. Do you reckon it's the wokeness, uh, you know, go woke, go broke factor here, or maybe it's just not the right show? I, uh, I have no idea. That is the first time I've seen it. I, I, I wouldn't slag off at anyone's television show if someone's having a go, but it doesn't look like my kind of program. I know people are going after... I think Magnus Kabansky has got... I don't know. I think she's a good voice to have in Australia, because I think we need all different types of voices. I think she's a good voice. And if she goes way too far, I think people should pull her up for it. I have no idea why the TV show isn't working. As I said, I, I, I don't think I'll be finding out soon either. I'm going to have to watch it. I love a quiz show, but the trouble with the quiz shows is they're too much hoopla and nonsense. Uh, just ask lots yeah, of questions. I agree. Get to the questions and the questions. answers. Yeah. yeah. Now, Liz, I've got to ask you about uh, Bonds. You're getting into all this sort of gender stuff these days, and they're, they're really promoting some sort of uh, gender non-specific uh, underwear, basically. But even though they're saying we're heading... In, that's the word they use that we're heading into a in, into a genderful future. What's a genderful future? Chris, the lengths that different brands are going to, and I would say the majority of them these days, to be woke. My goodness, it was only a matter of time before Bonds took this plunge. They do love to be pioneering in these kinds of areas. But this is just another brand bending over backwards to virtual signal about how politically correct, how woke they are. So we're literally making clothes now, and Bonds isn't the first brand to do this, for people who aren't sure whether they're a guy or a girl or believe they're somewhere in between... Um, I don't quite see how this is necessary where uh, when when given whether whether you're transgender or not you only have one set of genitalia even if you <laughs> have had an operation there's still just two sets Let's, to um... choose from so this this is really confusing to I, I mean why why do you need tra uh, underwear genderless underwear it it just it makes no sense to me but that's Ju just me Justin, it reminds me of the bloke who says, you know, my wife goes to bed in uh, my boxes and gets around the house in my T-shirt, but I wear her knickers just once and all hell breaks loose. And then there's uh, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Let's not make fun of uh, people's genders uh, here, whether it be identity or, or uh, any way, shape or form. What I'd like to make fun of uh, is that clothing. Uh, I think that's... Atrocious. It's straight out I of Little House on the Prairie, male, you reckon? Female, up, down, <laughs> yeah. or anything. I, okay. I wouldn't be caught dead in that gear, to be <laughs> frank. I think that's. Uh, and look, look at the models. They never look happy about wearing it either, do they? I mean, they're. Yeah, you've got to be happier. Oh, well, got no, 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 that's, that's not... We don't want to bag Bonds too much, mate. We, you know, we might spruik a genderless uh, underwear ad on this station. Thanks for joining us, Justin and Liz. Appreciate it. Thanks, mate.